last thing we want to talk about is, so what can we do for your training right now to get you effective performance and not overtrain you? The two and a half weeks prior to that last week, here's what I want to see. Number one, every week needs a minimum of one recovery and regen session. A whole day dedicated to recovery and regen. Aerobic flushing for 8 to 12 minutes, soft tissue recovery work, mobilizers, flushing, you know, hot cold contrast, whatever it is, a whole day for nothing but recovery and regen. I want a second day each week where you just cut back half your volume and a fraction of the intensity. So do your work, do your run, do your bricks, whatever it may be, but a half of what you normally do. Okay. So as you can tell, today is a recovery and regen day. I am just mobilizing and then I'm going to hit the jacuzzi and take a cold plunge as well as foam roll. Do a little golf ball on the feet, a little tennis ball on the IT bands. I'm kind of digging this relaxation stuff. Thanks Hoppo. The second thing I want you to do is this. When you do your anaerobic work, the other, the other trend I noticed on your um, data in the graphs online is this, <clears throat> you tend to do a very typical, what we call MLSS, maximum lactate steady state training. In, uh, in the world of athletics, we've called it tempo runs for decades. A tempo run is this, here's your threshold. I'm gonna get you just below it. So you're anaerobic, but you're not at your max where you crash and burn, okay? Just below it, and you're gonna stay there for like a good 15, 20, 25 minutes. And the idea is it teaches your body to really buffer lactate. It teaches your body to work just short of um, threshold so that it pushes the threshold to the right, which is great. Problem is, you, here's, here's a guideline for you. You shouldn't do more than 20% of your weekly volume with that kind of training. You shouldn't do more than 20% of your weekly volume with that kind of training. Because it's so exhaustive, it takes several days to fully recover from it. Got it. Good morning! So we are on week 11 of our training. We are tapering the volume. However, as a total of minutes of time under tension, we have 225 minutes of training. Yes, that is tapering the volume, everyone. We are only allowed to do 20% of our training in gear four or five, which means that we can only do 22 and a half minutes at that level. We're going on a 45 minute bike ride today and then we're headed right into the pool for a brick session of 25 minute swim. We're gonna do five minutes in gear four and five today during the ride with intervals. We're gonna try and recover all the way back down to gear two, mid or front end of gear three, and then in the pool, we're doing true heart rate recovery intervals. The other option you've got for anaerobic work is intervals. You do intervals well once a week. Come back to a full recovery between every set. Okay. So if you're going above threshold 90%, 95 whatever it may be, I want you back in the 60s to, before you go again. Okay, so we are going to start our true heart rate recovery intervals for our workout today. It's going to last for 25 minutes complete. We are going to try and swim 50 meters as quick as we can, get our heart rate up to max, and then recover all the way back down to 50%. You will see how long it will take us. Right, ladies? Yep, that's right. All right, here we go. So here comes Jen, and there's Amy. It's almost my turn.
short, Chica. 92. Nice Woo! Booyah! Good. Okay, so we're on week 11. We're tapering that volume. It's time to run, and today the run is for 20 minutes, and we have three anaerobic intervals. That means I'm going to run up to gear four using my polar heart rate watch, to, and I have it set on percentage, and it will beep as soon as I get into that gear. I'm gonna stay in that gear for two minutes. I'm only doing it three times, so that means I have six minutes in that higher gear. I did, I've already done five minutes in that high gear during a bike this week, and six minutes during a swim this week, which means I only can do 22 minutes in that gear four, because I only can do 20%. So, after I've run that anaerobic interval, I'm gonna try and get my heart rate back down to 60%, even if I have to walk. <laughs> and here I go. Start my watch. See you guys later. The rest of the week is going to be either recovery sessions or it's going to be full on training sessions. But guess what gear you're going to train in? Two. Two. <laughs> <laughs> Two. Maybe a little bit of three. Maybe. Good morning. It is a nice, cool October day in Las Vegas, Nevada. 65 degrees. We are on week 11. We have 19 days until our race. And what that means is we are tapering our volume. Our race length is going to be a 20K bike ride, which means it's going to take us about 55 minutes. So our bike ride today is 40 minutes. So we're decreasing the amount of time under tension. However, we are trying to stay in zone 2 and 3 like Hoppo talked about in our gears. So I have set my polar heart rate watch to alarm if I go above zone three, and trust me, it beeps, it's not cool. <laughs> it makes me feel inadequate. So we're gonna go for our 40 minute ride. No beeping! I think um, one of the things for the people listening and watching this is this. Uh, one of the most powerful things about doing some aerobic work and people are looking at me right now going, but Hopper, you all say like, you know, long, steady state aerobic, too much caution. No, that's relative to the client's goals and styles and lifestyle. You're training for an endurance athlete. You've got to have all five gears, right? Right. It's this. When you train the aerobic gears, especially gear two, it has the incredible benefit of not only using different fuel, but what we call glycogen sparing. It's called glycogen sparing. So one of the things that we can do in the next three weeks is work on your glycogen sparing. So that come race weeks, you've got a full tank. We may have pushed your threshold to the right so that you can shift gears better and we've prevented you from overtraining. Those three things alone will ensure that you've got a better chance of giving your best performance on a day. All right, well, uh, we welcome everybody who's listening to this to post questions on our discussion page. Um, not just me, but also to Hal. Hal's just the one doing the work. I'm just the geek sitting here talking. She's, uh... <laughs> awesome, Hal. Thanks so much for sharing, mate. Thank you very much, Hoppo, for all your advice and input. You're welcome, mate. I'll be speaking to you real soon, and I'll be checking your stats. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> See you, bye. All right, bye.